Today I'm going to be making an updated video on hedging as I feel like my previous video on hedging left out a lot of crucial information that is needed in order to fully take advantage of everything that hedging has to offer. And obviously hedging is absolutely amazing. It allows you to profit off of the market regardless of if it moves up or down. And in the worst case scenario, it at least allows you to greatly reduce your risk while potentially exposing yourself to the same upside. So this is a really cool concept. I think that everyone needs to be aware of this concept, how to use it and how you can implement it in your trading. And that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. But before I get into the video, make sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. Also make sure to join our Discord group down in the description down below if you would like to join our amazing community of like-minded traders. But the first thing I just want to start out with is the definition of hedging. So a hedge is an investment to reduce the risk of adverse price movements in an asset. Normally a hedge consists of taking an offsetting position in a related security. Now I know that that definition may sound a little bit overwhelming. However, in practice it's extremely easy to understand and also extremely powerful. And so I first want to start off by an example of two companies that I personally traded. And of course, I will go over what companies you should look at when hedging at the end of this video. But first, I want to start off with an example. And this example is with a biotech stock that I personally liked, especially that we are now in this sort of coronavirus market. Obviously, everyone's looking at coronavirus. Biotech stocks are very hyped right now because people are just waiting for that next company that's going to come out with some research or some news that could lead them closer to some coronavirus medicine. And the one company that I personally liked was Guild, so G-I-L-D, on the stock market. I thought that they were in a good position to at least benefit from coronavirus in some way, even if they didn't directly come up with the vaccine or antiviral medicine for it. So I wanted to have a long position on Guild. However, there was one thing that I was worried about, and any trader would be worried about this. I was worried about the economy continuing to move down. If the S&P 500 crashed, for example, I was worried that guilds could possibly move down as well. And I wanted to be covered in that scenario. So what I did is I went over to the S&P 500 and I opened a short position on the S&P 500 in order to cover the downside of this position. So I knew that if the S&P 500 continued to move downwards, then I would have that short position in order to cover my losses from the long position on guilt. Now you look at the other scenario. Well, what if the S&P 500 continues to move up? If the S&P 500 continues to move up, as you've seen, it has actually continued to move up within this period. The thing is that although this short position is in a loss, the gains from the long position on guild far outweigh the loss from the S&P 500. So it's very important that when you're setting up these positions, when you're looking at, for example, two companies that you want to hedge against each other, so here guild and the S&P 500, you want to make sure that in the case that you do go into a loss on one of the positions, that the other position will be able to outweigh that in a best case scenario. And of course, if something bad ends up happening and the S&P 500 goes up and Guild goes down, then that could result in some sort of losses. However, once again, you need to plan this by finding good companies that you want to hedge against each other in order to limit your downside while having an unlimited upside. As if Guild, for example, shot up 100% tomorrow, which is very unlikely, but let's just say it did, then I would be able to make a lot of money once again about while covering almost all of my losses if the S&P 500 continued to move down. So this is just one example of hedging. However, this can be used across any market, whether it be Forex, cryptocurrency, stock market. It, this can be used across all markets as long as you find two good assets that you can hedge against each other. So what should you be looking for in assets that you want to hedge? So I'm going to go through a list of four things that you should look for. First, you should look for a difference in volatility. As I mentioned before, if this company were to move up the same percentage that the S&P could move up in the same time, so if I had a short here and a long here and this moved up 1% and the S&P went 
down 1% or went up 1% too, then I would make the equal amount of money that I would end up losing on the other position. So you want to make sure that you are looking at companies that could have a large difference in volatility. And this could be maybe that that specific company has a larger historical volatility, or maybe there is a major news event that's coming up. That's my number two. If there's a major news event coming up on one of the assets and the other one tends to follow it. So if Guild, just an example, if Guild tended to follow the S&P 500, however, I knew that there was a major news event that could possibly make it skyrocket soon, then I could hedge this position. And although I'm not making any money initially, once that news event comes out, then I would be able to have that large amount of profit on that one position. So if you find something with major news, that can be very profitable as well. Finally, you also want to look for protection from a certain side of a trade. You always want to make sure that although the two assets are not directly connected to each other in terms of volatility, you still want to make sure that if, for example, this guild trade you know, went against me if it were to move down, then I really want to make sure that I'm covered as much as possible on this S&P 500 position. And even though you are hedging, that doesn't mean that you cannot set stop losses or take profits, etc. You can always do that as well. And if, for example, Guild shoots up and then I end up closing this position for profit, I can still hold this S&P 500 short as I personally still think that the S&P 500 will continue to move down eventually. So just because you close one position or the other, whether it be for profit or for a loss, you can still hold the other position afterwards. So once you go through sort of that list and you find two good companies or an index and a company that you want to trade or hedge against each other, then you will be able to hopefully substantially increase your long-term profits. And once again, as with anything in trading, you want to make sure that you are doing as many trades as possible with a profitable strategy. As the more trades that you are opening, if I open, let's say, 20 hedged positions on different assets that I think could be profitable or are historically profitable if I hedge them, then chances are that I will be profitable as at least a majority of those positions will end up in profit. If I'm only hedging one position, then there's a higher chance that that one position could end up being a bad position and that hedge could end up in a loss. So you just want to try to trade as many different assets as possible, hedge a bunch of different assets against each other, and then in the long run, regardless of if the market goes up or goes down, as we've seen with coronavirus, you will still be able to make money. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. I plan on making more hedging videos if you guys continue to enjoy them. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one.